So let's talk about a discussion chapter. Discussion chapter which can be really tricky and really frustrating uh, or it can be a lot of fun. So it really depends on how you approach it but it definitely does cause problems because every single week I get asked about the discussion. How do I write the discussion? What do I put in the discussion? So, uh, so right next to uh, the question of how do I develop themes from all these codes that I have this is definitely one of the most common questions that I get asked during my private classes, which I offer. So if you're struggling with any aspect of research planning and implementation, remember you can reach out and we can book a private consultation. So that was a quick advertisement, but let's go back to our topic. So discussion chapter. So the reason it's uh, so tricky is because there is hardly any structure involved. There is hardly any kind of a template or guidelines as to what exactly goes into that chapter, which again, it can be fun. You can feel like once you realize that you can feel like you have full autonomy because that's what it is. It is your chance. It is your chapter. There's hardly any rules as to what to put there. It's your chapter. It's your chance to communicate how you feel about your findings. So for this reason, like I said, if you look at it this way, it can be really fun to write. Uh, there are hardly any rules. Uh, there are two main rules in the discussion, in the discussion and uh, one of them is regarding what goes in the discussion. Uh, what you definitely have to put in the discussion chapter are references to the literature. So links to the literature. The discussion has to have these links. So it is about placing, positioning your findings within the previously discussed literature. So the literature that you showed in the literature review chapter. So that's something that absolutely has to be there as well as any kind of comment or attitude or how you feel about any of the findings. It also goes there, not in the results. And there are also, so that, that's the first rule of the only two rules that there are about this chapter. And the second rule is about what not to do there. Uh, so one thing you don't want to put in the discussion is new literature. So even if you found something new based on your findings, you have to go back to your literature review, add it to the literature review, and then you can talk about it in the discussion chapter. But you don't want to introduce new literature in the discussion. And also uh, in a similar way, you don't want to introduce new findings from your research. So again, only comment on what you've already showed in the results. Only use the quotes that you showed in the results. Ideally, don't use quotes, but if you have to remind the reader, you can use the same quotes that you previously showed and only talk about the same findings that you already showed in the results. So these are the only rules about the discussion chapter. So how do we organize it and how do we actually write it so that it doesn't just sound boring, just like a repetition of the results where we, uh, we only add uh, a comment here and there about whether it's the same or different or similar to the literature, what can we actually write in that chapter? So the first idea and what you can do and how you can structure that chapter is structure it around your research questions. So this may sound obvious, but it's not always the case. Uh, you may have uh, seen my other videos in which I talk about the results and, and reporting qualitative results. And I explained that usually I try to avoid uh, organizing my results according to the research questions for several reasons, but overall I usually go with organizing it according to the themes. And whilst it usually is fairly obvious and it should be fairly obvious by the time you get to the end of that results chapter, how we actually answer your research questions, uh, the discussion chapter is a chance uh, to do that in a more direct uh, an explicit way. So, uh, so one of the things you can do, and of course, remember for anything that you put there, any of these suggestions that I make, uh, the rules I previously mentioned will always apply. So you do have to talk about the literature. And like I said, optionally, if there is a, uh, a way to do that, also express any of your opinions. So this will be always present. But one of the ways in which you can organize the discussion is to go with the research questions and organize this chapter around these research questions. So in a direct and explicit way, explain, you know, having, uh, having shown what I've shown and the results chapter, let's now talk about how we can answer the research questions. And while you're doing that, of course, uh, draw on the literature and also comment on any links or similarities or differences with the literature. The next idea is to comment on a model from the literature, a model that maybe is a predominant, a dominant model in the field, some kind of a model uh, or diagram or something that you showed, uh, a kind of a template that you showed in the uh, literature review chapter. Again, 
Uh, not always will this be the case, not always do you have such model, but if you do, if there is a model, like I said, usually in some studies there is something that's just obvious, obviously a, dominate, uh, a dominant model in the field. If there is such thing, uh, here is the place where you can comment on any similarities or differences or how your findings fit into that model or don't fit into that model. So if they fit, for example, you can draw that model again, and then uh, add to that drawing your themes and sub-themes from the, the results chapter. So something you previously showed and reported in the results chapter, now you can uh, kind of add it to that model and experiment with different visuals for how they fit or do not fit that model, or maybe how they enrich that model. So, so that's another idea and something that people often do. Comment on their, on their findings, but this time bringing that dominant theory or model that I previously showed in the literature review, uh, to this uh, discussion. Another idea, and it also involves a model, is to create your own model. So in some studies, especially in grounded theory, uh, the point or the goal is to develop some kind of a theory or a model or a diagram, in which case, again, this is a good place to do so. So in the if that was your goal, or even if it wasn't your goal, but it kind of emerged as something that uh, is feasible and, and seems to make sense, again, uh, this is where you want to do it. So in the results, you would be talking about the themes, the sub-themes, uh, reporting on what the participants told you or what you found from your data. But here in the discussion, you may take these findings and start uh, elaborating on how we can develop some kind of an understanding, some kind of a model, like I said, a diagram based on these findings. So, so in the previous chapter, it was just kind of dry, pure reporting. Here you, you can uh, have more freedom to experiment with things and suggest things and draw things and explain how they may explain something that we're trying to understand. So like I said, this will be uh, particularly uh, obvious, so to speak, in a, in a grounded theory study where it was always, uh, the goal was always to provide this detailed explanation or a theory uh, for a specific phenomenon we're exploring, but it doesn't have to be a grounded theory. It can be any kind of a an approach or methodology uh, where you just decide that it makes sense to present these findings at some kind of a slightly deeper uh, analytically, I'm not sure if you can say that deeper analytically, but uh, a level that is analytically deeper than what you showed in the results. And finally, this will depend on the university, uh, this will depend on the guidelines that you receive from your institution and your supervisors. But sometimes it is allowed to talk about the implications in the discussion, which makes it so much easier. I always tell these students who ask me about uh, the content of their discussion, I ask them if this is allowed. Sometimes they say it is allowed or even recommended, in which case my response is always that is a very good news because it makes it so much easier to decide what to talk about. The implications are arguably one of the most important things in your whole thesis or dissertation because they answer the question, the so what question, who's going to benefit, what happens next, how and why are these findings in any way useful or interesting. So this is what you, uh, this is where you're convincing the reader that these findings in fact are useful and are relevant and are important. So, uh, so regardless of where you put that discussion, the implications, the discussion of the implications is, like I said, almost the most important thing in the whole work. And if you are allowed to put that in the discussion, it means that one of the problems that you had has been solved straight away because now you know exactly what to talk about, or at least in terms of the overall context, you know, the content, you know, you need to talk about the implications. Now, what are these implications is, of course, another question. But like I said, you will have to answer this question anyway, regardless of where you put that discussion. Usually, traditionally, I find that the implications are more often than not being put in the conclusions uh, conclusions or the concluding chapter, but sometimes people put them in the discussion. So, so basically their discussion kind of goes uh, briefly through the main findings and does comment again, as always, as I said, on the literature and how they, uh, these findings can be positioned within the literature presented. So basically a brief summary of the findings and some, some additional comment. And after that, people just go into discussing the implications. So who's gonna benefit, how, what do we do based on these findings? So these are just some of the ideas of what you can put in the discussion chapter. Of course, you can experiment with combining these different things. And I've seen discussion chapters that have all these elements. So they are commenting on previous models. They're building a new model, of course, commenting on the literature and maybe mentioning 
uh, the resulting implication. So you can experiment with all these things as well. It's not that you have to choose one of these things, but I do hope that I, I give you some ideas for what to put there. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed this content, if you learned something new, share it. If you know somebody who can benefit from this instruction, comment below, ask me if you have any questions or provide your ideas and give me your suggestions for what you put in the discussion chapter.